fear. I was telling everyone a little bit about my missed opportunity of painting at Jungle Love, which sure. is which is the only like festival that I got close to painting at because I got accepted, but it was happening exactly when we decided to commit to doing the lap of Australia. So it was a bit of a tough decision. Well, not really, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it sucked when I had to call uh, the manager and be like, I need to give up my opportunity and my spot. And he just gave it to another artist, obviously, but um that was probably the closest i ever got to painting at that kind of festival and i was also explaining how there are different types of festivals we can paint at so there are obviously the the bush doves and musical ones and there are also street art festivals which um the reason i love talking to you about it is because you have experience in both isn't that right yeah for sure um yeah i mean can you hear me all right? How many, yeah, I can hear you all right. Is everyone else yeah. um, hearing cool. us fine? Send us a thumb up if the audio is good, guys. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I was just looking back through my um, work, really, to see when the first one I painted at was. Mm -hmm. And it was in 2016, uh, a proper little bush stuff. Um, and... It really kind of just came about by taking my paint out there with me and then kind of painting something that was already out there. Um, okay. Yeah, because, like, you know, most of the time there's always fences and, um, like, you know, like black fence line wrapping and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, usually I, I would have – I think I would have just asked – one of the guys and being like, yeah, like I'd love to paint something. And they're like, cool, here's a, here's a wall, you know? Um, Go and it's like, the, it. it's the best to paint in those kind of environments because like you've got music like right close to you. Um, and you know, everyone kind of, everyone kind of just like, you know, loves to watch something be created anyway as well. So yeah, it's a really cool environment for it. How do you manage your time into the festival versus the time painting at a festival like that? Because I mm. find, you know, when you paint public, people talk to you all the time. And yeah. I find that struggle <laughs> being in the zone. And I imagine working, you know, like at a festival where I met you. I met you at its frequency. Okay, free, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I recognize you you weren't painting when i recognized you but um i did see you later on painting and i was like i'm not gonna go bother him because i know how annoying that is <laughs> um do you get That's interrupted so like all the time yeah for sure um it took me a little while to get used to but yeah it's definitely something that you just kind of like uh, uh i mean yeah you get some people are i'm definitely one of those people like I will wait until someone has a break and then be like hey like and introduce myself only because I know like what it's like when you're in the zone and uh, you come up and just start having a chat and most of the time they just want to tell you about like you know something that they've seen or you know yeah. they're inspired by and you're like yeah cool um, <laughs> obviously if it's a festival some people could be like you know pretty out of it as well so um, it can be <laughs> Yeah, it can be like a little bit, a little bit hectic sometimes. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll just try to, I mean, obviously if you can have a friend with you, like sometimes now when I'm going to go paint at a festival, I'll ask for a plus one and then that way, and then I'll, I'll try and get someone who I know is going to be able to help out with either filming or just chatting to people. People, man management yeah. yeah that's what my husband does all the time <laughs> so yeah, nice. what was that first festival that you mentioned um just kind of happened that you painted because you were there and you had the paint but mm. uh usually there are application forms to fill out right like one of the questions i got in my um little artist facebook group when i said that we're going to be having this live was um if they reach out to you or if you reach out to them. So as far as I know, um, every time the festival 
um, gets announced that is going ahead for the following year, they eventually open a artist application um, side of the website, and that's when you submit the mm. application. It's all slightly different. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. Um, like when I first started doing it, there wasn't really any application or anything like that. Um, there was like the visual artist application. Um, but, but now as a mural artist, you pretty much just go under that same application. So you'll submit a visual artist application, say for um, the gallery. And then instead of saying like, what's your medium, it'll say like um, acrylic, digital, and then it'll say like spray paint or like mural right. artists. So I think they're including it more into the application now, which That's is very cool. Good. Um, and, and, and then in the notes, I'll just say like, would love to um, either do some stage decor or um, if you have a wall available, like happy to chat. And then, and then it'll probably like go through to the, um, the, the gallery coordinator yeah. and, they'll either say, hey, we've, yeah, we've got a couple of walls. Um, I'll put you in touch with this person. That's how it's usually been for me. Very interesting. Do they pay you? Um, um, you know what? I actually got paid for the first time this year. From, yes. uh, like I, I've been paid before, but like basically just to cover paints. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I got paid like my, my, my first kind of decent um, amount this year, which is really cool. I was like, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something you can negotiate with them. Um, for me, it's always been like, I, I really just want to go to the festival. So, like, I'm usually happy to just go and paint anyway. Um, and get free tickets yeah. at least, right? Like, so for you and maybe a plus one, which usually is quite a decent, you know, tickets for this kind of festivals, guys. Like, we're talking the multi-day festivals and we um, – tickets as an entrance pass for every day and a car pass together can be on the four hundred four and a half hundred dollars often so it's a it's a good trade for <laughs> and sure. double two, that, that's a lot of money yeah yeah sometimes they will um like i know with esoteric festival down in uh victoria they will give you like say say you have like a three meter wall they might give you one ticket or a six meter wall, they'll give you two tickets. A nine meter wall, they'll give you three tickets, oh. and you can sell those. So that's how you can kind of make your oh, money that's... back. Yeah, it's like paying fast. <laughs> but yeah. it's a great incentive. Okay, I didn't know that. That's so cool. Yeah, when I um, got accepted in Jungle Love, they asked me um, if for what fee I would do it, and I negotiated two tickets. And I think I told them that I'm happy to just have most materials covered and I like estimated $350. So obviously if I had that paint, I was planning to use my, my spare paint, then I would have made like the $350 on top. But we're not talking like the same type of money, guys, that we are charging when we paint murals, unfortunately. <laughs> That's very far no. from that. And Daphne, tell me instead um, how it works at Street Art Festival. Is it the same? Mm. Um, mm, not really, but it's it's kind of still the same where it's very, very low budget. Uh, yeah, like I think oh, I did one for BSA Fest uh, a couple of years ago and I think it was like a 10 metre wall and it was like a couple hundred dollars or something and your paint covered. Uh, and I know like some other artists who do like really big walls um it's still like super low budget it's just more about the exposure and um yeah i guess like the community aspect of it you know like meeting the other artists um yeah. just kind of you know getting doing all yeah just getting involved and uh, yeah it's definitely a, a labor of love though <laughs> Well, in my head, like, I always thought that at least you get to paint whatever you want. And usually you get a very public wall. So, you know, a lot of beginner muralists come to me and they're like, oh, I just want to paint, you know, like the biggest, most public wall in the city. And I'm like, well, they're very hard to get by yourself. But usually 
this mm. a street art festival will help you get there um but it's not going to be the good money everyone thinks that the big the big most public murals that they see oh they must have cost like millions <laughs> that's like, so yeah, true that's i was literally i was talking to someone about this the other day uh well, not the other day a little while ago i think it was juddy roller yep. who does um a lot of those big projects yeah and he was like Anytime you see an artist that's uh, doing what they want to do, they usually self-fund all their most of their projects because they're like getting their name out there and uh, they'll travel around the world and just like literally fund their own projects until until you become a name and then people start booking you. You know what I mean? But yeah. like most of those projects, you're like, wow, it's like this person did that and they got to do whatever they want and they probably got paid. Money for it and like they probably self funded it <laughs> i don't know yeah uh, i heard a couple of stories like that too yeah <laughs> that's totally. probably very true most of the time but yeah. um what i what i found disappointing when i applied for most of the street art festivals so about two years ago when i started painting murals um i got i built up a little bit of courage when I realized that I don't have to be a super good artist to at least apply for one. And I thought if I apply to all of them, um, you know, maybe one is gonna say yes. And the challenges were a few, like putting together a list, a comprehensive list of festivals is really hard. Some of them don't go ahead every year. Uh, some of them have restrictions. Some of them prioritize local artists. So I thought it's a good way to travel as well, I suppose. but. That was difficult. And then I realized that the application forms are all different, like super different. True. But what surprised me is that none of them um, was clear about the fact if you get money or not, which, you know, when you are an artist and you're applying to maybe be in a cool street art festival in a different state, you actually don't know if you're going to have to save money for like accommodation if you have to travel with your own paint and that's a little bit like disappointing that there is no clarity around that did you find sure. any, any festivals that were actually clear about it and if so at what stage of the application no not really um it was pretty much like you apply and then if you get in they will they will send you a uh kind of like a proposal kind of thing you know like they'll be like yep uh this is what we can offer you okay can you negotiate or it's kind of like you have to say yes to this or we skip to the next artist i don't know yeah i've, I've <laughs> never really negotiated yeah. <laughs> i'm just like awesome yeah um yeah. but I, I take it yeah i mean they're pretty one thing i did notice is that you can like they'll say for instance brisbane street art festival was like just um here's your paint list let us know what you need and i was like okay cool so i like ordered a heap of paint like more than i thought i would need um and then they're like oh you gotta limit it to like 40 cans and i was like okay cool there's the limit you know but like they didn't really tell you that um yeah and uh, so theme wise like are you allowed to paint anything you want once you're in um yeah i mean it was pretty i was super lucky like i did although no my wall was very rough so i was like okay i'm not doing any detail i did a bit of an abstract no, design like one near the um, arena like i remember yeah uh, Oh, it's terrible, and they're making everyone paint on it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was like, oh, man, it was such a bad texture. Um, but I kind of, the theme was pretty open. Like, they obviously wanted an explanation of, like, what you want to do. Um, and, yeah, they were, they were pretty open with it, really. Um, so you, yeah, have were... to, you have to kind of explain where you're going to be painting be when you apply. Is that correct? Yeah, so they like they wanted to see a concept and uh, a little story about it, just like what's the uh, what's the message behind it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Was that? Do you have like some ideas that you already had, or do you come up with concepts and ideas for each specific festival? 
Um, I just used a concept that I already had because uh, I had so many jobs on at the time and I was just like, this looks fun to paint. And yeah. uh, I kind of just crafted a little story around it as well. Yeah, that makes sense. It would be so much pressure. It's going to be up there forever. And yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. Oof. There's another uh, festival down in Tasmania that I really wanted to do. Uh, you probably would have seen it. That's a street art festival or a mural festival. And... But you had to, you had to like paint a miniature piece of what you were going to paint, and then send it into them and pay money. Uh, I think it was oh, like one hundred fifty dollars or something. That's for, and you might not town. even get in. Yeah, yeah, that's for the town. Uh, what is it called? Um, the the town famous for murals in the north of Tasmania. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I visited that town. It was an interesting experience because everyone kept telling me, you have to go there when you're in Tasmania. You're going to love it. It's all full of murals. And um, we're done my job later on. That's a very good question. Why is that in the session? Um, mm. Yes, yeah, when I was, oh, what was the name of that town? Ben, if you're listening to this and you know the name of the town, message it so I can see it. Um, so, they, the town is plastered in these, um, so the, the murals are not actually painted on walls. They're all mm. painted on these panels and the panels are hanged around the town. There are some, some murals on walls, but Sheffield, yeah, thank you, Sheffield. <laughs> Sheffield. Nice. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed because I feel, um, thank you, I feel like the walls, all and the challenges of each wall really add on to 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 the prettiness of the mural. Like I don't know, it's a it, it, it's a it's important. Like the the wall itself tells a story and it adapts to the wall. Whereas by making it all on panels, they all look very similar. Also, what mm. I noticed is, is like sixty or seventy percent of them were painted either by the same artist or in exactly the same style, like the old fashion mural style that tells the town story so mm. after like the 10th one I stopped really reading the story in them I was just like okay show me show me there's something different and then since they started doing the festival more recently um, they started as collaborations with artists from all over the country and there is like a garden where these boards are like all attached into like almost like a maze that you walk through oh, okay. and that's where you find an interesting art you can see that in the last couple of years they really opened to different styles and different concepts i think there was even one abstract in there so cool. um that was interesting but they're still all on panels and i'm like no like I, at least it wasn't what i was expecting when someone told me it's gonna be like a town full of murals i literally thought i'm gonna see houses walls fences like everything wow, true. over that way so uh still mm. a beautiful place to visit just um i i've been so particular about not looking it up because i wanted to see it in person and i think just mm. what i had in my head didn't match at all what i found so but I Interesting. heard that, yeah, you have to send them like a miniature of that. And then, yeah, they don't cover the cost of the portrait. You're right. Um, I wow. thought when you mentioned Tasmania, the Vibrance, the guys at the Vibrance store, they also put together a festival. I think it, it hasn't been on through COVID, but they are aiming to restart it. And that's going to be in Hobart. And when I was there, cool. I met them. They are super and they were trying to get on with all the permits and um, you know find walls and coordinate with the artists but they tried really hard to get every single artist paid and I really wow. um, I really liked that um, yeah, we cool. had a girl here asking if you think you got some jobs after painting at festivals because of painting at festivals and getting that visibility um, it's kind of hard to tell, but right. <laughs> if anything, I probably got some vans to paint. <laughs> um, you know, like you just got to think about like people aren't real. I mean, most people are there for like the music and, um, it's a great way to connect with people and they're all, everyone's like quite like-minded as well. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think, I mean, I probably have, yeah, I probably have. 
gotten a, a job or two out of it. Um, but probably pretty chill, just like, you know, maybe someone's home or a bus or like mm -hmm. mostly vans. Um, that would be mostly through the music festivals, not the street art festivals. Yeah, yeah. through the music festivals. Um, yeah, haven't really, it's kind of hard to know. Like I usually, every time I do get an inquiry from someone, I'm like, oh, how did you hear about me? Um, it's never really been like, oh, I saw your stuff at Brisbane Street Art Festival. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, to be fair though you have so much amazing art all up and down the east coast like i get so excited oh, every thanks, time man. i see one of your pieces it's like seeing a rainbow um yeah, you get like <laughs> so i don't know if you know they especially like painting for street art festivals like the one in brisbane you see so much art around it it's hard to say which one got painted during a festival which one it hasn't unless you go with the little tags um, totally. Yeah, totally. But they, they definitely, to, to respond to that question, you definitely get the opportunity. And then I always tell to my students, after you finish a mural, the mural is gone. It's, it's, it's not yours mm. anymore, you know, but you can walk away with three things if you're smart about it. Walk away with experience <laughs> if you pushed your limits and if you try to be better than the last thing you painted the second thing you can walk away with is amazing footage and that guys is up to you to make that happen take photos take videos because that's your real final product for your portfolio and the third <clears> thing you should always aim to walk away with is a review because we ask a lot of money for murals and sometimes a lot of trust um, because, you know, it's a big investment, but also people will give us keys to their properties or their businesses so we can paint um, when it's comfortable to us or when, when, we, can, when we can. And mm. I feel like when you have some reviews, you, you also have credibility and, um, and people tend to trust you more. So I think it's very important every time you paint a wall, just ask yourself, what can I do to have all three of these things checked and um that's, that's so ultimately good. like your portfolio is gorgeous you have a very good website tell me a little bit you have experience in graphic design and um cinematography is that correct um yeah i did a diploma in graphic design in 2014 mm -hmm. and that was super helpful like oh so I feel like it's so handy just to know how to like present your work well, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, just, uh, oh, so good. Like, even though I don't really want to do graphic design, I definitely want to do illustration work eventually, working my way into that. But um, yeah, graphic design and then video. I just, I just watch a lot of YouTube. Like I love YouTube <laughs> artists and stuff. And um, yeah, I kind of just like teach myself that kind of thing. Something that I'm trying to do more too is like, um, yeah, create create a, a cool video, like make, make a little story out of it as well. Um, if you guys haven't mm. checked, you totally go follow me. He has some of the <laughs> best mural videos. It's oh, unfortunately, you. spoiler alert, you're going to feel like you're never going to match that level of talent because they're just so good. Um, oh, that'd be very fun to watch. So definitely go check them out. I... I really struggle with remembering to take, you know, some footage. So sometimes I have like so many photos and videos of the beginning and then so many photos and videos of the end and I completely miss the middle process. So I got <laughs> yeah. myself a little I got myself a little um what's it called? Is it Insta? Insta that's yeah, sick. I love it. The battery is great. I have like an extra battery to attach on it as a tripod and um, I just put it on and I forget it exists and it's easy to then e extract little bits and pieces and the app nice. allows you to, to make like record movements like you so so it looks a bit more interesting than just like a fixed camera. Yeah, um, That's yeah really cool. but I we just got a drone as well. So I'm I super excited. <laughs> But I'm making it my husband's problem because I struggle with technology as, as it is, like keeping up with, you know, everything. And that's why probably I I was dreading getting a drone because I'm like, it's just so much more footage to deal with mm. and files mm -hmm. that you move and edit. But I guess technology is getting so good that those files, like the quality is really good. You can do a lot of editing straight on the app. So... 
I just mm. dump it on my phone, make a reel in five minutes, and I call it done. But I admire your videos so much, and I hope to get a little bit better. Uh, you obviously took a diploma, but do you see many like courses on YouTube or like? Do you would you look for stuff for artists or do you look for just generic um, videos? Um, yeah, definitely. There's like such a cool art art community on YouTube. Um, uh, yeah, I just get super inspired by watching their videos, really. Um, there's a really cool guy like Kipto. I don't know if you know Kipto. Um, 1000. Um, oh, yeah, I saw him. Yeah, like they do murals and their, their production level is like insane. Like, um, yeah, and and it takes a long time. Like I've got right now, like, like I've got hard drives just sitting there just with so much footage and it's like I feel I'm like I feel like I can't I feel like I'm not putting out enough stuff but I'm also just like ah it's all good like I'm learning um because it's all when you start filming with like 4k and shit it's like I can't even take a video on my phone because it's just full so it's like yeah. yeah it's once you start learning about it more you're like oh okay there's actually so much that goes into it like it's a whole nother job in itself yeah um, yeah, totally. I followed your advice and I got myself a new iPhone with a terabyte. <laughs> so, that's awesome. Uh, I'll see how long it's going to take me this time because my other phone, I still use it. Um, so I use my old phone to look the image when I True. paint. And I have the new phone for either to set up or to give to an assistant to take footage of me painting because that was the problem I was having before as well. Like if I look at the image from my phone, I can't use the phone. I don't remember yeah. to do much with it. That's yeah, a so good investment. Yeah, yeah, it was time. Yeah, for sure. And yes. um, editing photos. So, oh, first of all, I wanted to say, I think, you know, even if you don't keep up with editing them straight away, like you can always go back on that footage later. Like we have a whole lifetime of mm. self-promotion ahead of us. <laughs> so those videos, as long as you have them, I think you're going to find a time that, it, that are going to come in handy. Like, I was so grateful I was taking photos of everything through the first part of my 100 mural project because then when I suddenly decided to start teaching others, I actually had a photo of everything I was talking about. I was like, oh, I have I photos that. of my thrust. I had a photo of me cleaning when I oversprayed yeah. something. Or, you know, so it was good to find every single piece of footage um, as I was going. So you're probably going to find that as well. Yeah. But no, I really, love, editing... I really love that. Like you've even inspired me with just kind of like going back through your journey and like sharing bits and stuff. I'm like, wow, that's so, that's so cool because like I've done that too. I always document everything, but I might not share it at the time. So it's cool like it's in the bank you know and when you do want to tell a story about a certain project or something you can like look back and and you've got that stuff there so it's really cool watching what you're doing um resharing with your 100 mule project thank you i needed to hear that it's very vulnerable because i feel like obviously you improve as an artist and we tend to think that mm. the last piece <laughs> is our best one but it's not necessarily true, meaning like we go through stages, I think, not just improvement. Improvement is not linear. We get into different things at different times and each one of our works, like every mural will speak to different people in different ways. So I find that like resharing, I doubled my followers on Instagram in the past six months alone. So a lot of them haven't even seen the first murals of the 100 mural projects. A lot of them didn't know that I only started painting two years ago. So I think it was very good for inspirational reasons, which is why I think most people follow us in the first place. So it's, I think only fair to show them where it all started and um, how we grew from there. It's hard Love because that. I wasn't even taking enough photos and videos at the beginning. So I was like really struggling to find good photos or <laughs> I had to message the owners of the venue to send me some photos because I didn't even, I left without taking yeah, a final wow. photo sometimes, <laughs> which is so funny. Um, yeah. But the thing that I guess I used to struggle with um, from, I don't know if you can even call it um, 
uh, what you say? editing photos. So I realized that everyone else neural photos are bright and straight and looking super nice. And then I realized mine were all like dark and, and so I started editing them a little bit just to like, you know, take the colors up. And I was nice. always wondering, is that cheating? Is that not, you know, is that because maybe the mural is not that bright or something? And then I realized, no, everything published out there got a little bit edited, right? How do you feel about it? For sure. Um, yeah, I, I've thought about that too. I definitely edit all my photos too. I love using Visco. Have you heard of that app? Yeah. It's called VSCO and you can kind of like save presets almost the same as in Lightroom. And uh, I kind of have just like a few favorites that just do the right things, but doesn't, obviously you want it to, to be like still, if someone sees it in real life, you can look and be like, yeah, cool. It's not super over edited, yeah. but yeah, definitely like lifting up the um, brightness a little bit, contrast, sharpen, clarity. Yeah, exactly. All those kind of things. I use Snapseed, which is a free program for phones and iPads, and it does the same. Once you do a couple of edits, it it, it asks you for the next photo if you want to edit it the same way you edited the, the one the last one. So it kind of saves yeah, the last cool. um, thing. But yeah, and I feel like sometimes just straightening lines does such a big difference because you know when you paint on bricks and stuff, and then you take a photo and they are like a little bit yeah, tilted, it drives me insane. <laughs> Yeah. And I think you can mess with the perspective of um, like your work as well. And we don't realize how bad we are at taking like parallel photos or like, sorry, perpendicular to the surface. And I notice that a lot when my clients send me photos of the wall and, mm. and it's like sideways. And I'm like, I don't understand how big this is. <laughs> you take like yeah. a straight photo. Um, I like taking pictures um, for myself. Okay, mm. let me see if I have any more questions. So uh, Elizabeth asked, do you know if festivals have different budgets for different types of art? And if so, how can muralists tap into that? So I'm not really sure, but when I read this question, I thought straight away about how, you know, you can sometimes paint uh, the festival decor or you can paint at the festival, is that different? Do they pay you differently for these two things or is it really the same deal? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you could do, like, a stage. Like, I've done a couple of little stage designs, um, super, oh, like, and it's really hard sometimes, actually, because, like, they'll send you, like, a little template or a drawing of, like, what it's going to look like and it's so confusing like because there's so many layers like i helped um i don't know if toriki's in this chat but I helped toriki do a project for a stage um a month or two ago and it was so interesting watching her work like she sketched out all the um shapes on like the different bits of wood and um and then like cut them out, but then, like, layered it in a way so then the projection mappers can, like, do all their things and, like, it just it adds a whole other dimension. But I've only ever worked in, like, 2D and just yeah. Yeah. painted one thing and I'm like, that was it. Um, so that was really interesting watching that. Um, but, like, in terms of, yeah, I guess you just have to really negotiate with, like, the the festival organizer or something and be like what do you want to paint like what is it and then um yeah i guess just aim high and then usually be willing to come down a little bit <laughs> yeah true i guess festivals um i've dealt a lot with festival management and i saw a lot of it from the performer side of view given that my husband is very involved with the circus and some of our friends are and um uh, really like guys we i think we think they are much more organized than they really are <laughs> like every time a festival yeah. happens it's it's pure magic but it's absolute chaos on the back end like totally. you know we, we make, 
Yes, so budget is usually like, oh, whatever they have left, if they have any left, and they will always try to obviously pay performers and artists, but it is a labor of love, a collective labor of love every time. And you kind of so earn a spot at the table if you, if you mm. compromise with them a little bit. And, yeah. like, and what, you will like return what? and maybe they will treat you better next time. <laughs> exactly. Like... Like, that's how I even got in with Earth Frequency was just um, kind of literally just starting from, like, the bottom and then every year, like, you know, oh, okay, yeah, we've worked with Schmick before. Um, we can do give you this wall. Uh, and then, like, and then to, to last year when, like, I finally got, like, paid a pretty decent amount and got a really cool wall for, like, a workshop space. Um, but I've been going to Earth Frequency since, like, maybe like five six years ago so yeah, okay. like yeah definitely it's cool to it's cool to just build up a relationship hey with with the people yeah. you know because they're all they're all the same they all everyone loves just put it like doing it for the love kind of thing um and then so yeah you got to just like build up a relationship and then work your way into being like knowing like your worth and being like yeah i get you can get paid for this kind of thing but, but but if you different... if you come in at the start and you're like, yeah, I want to paint at your festival and I want like two thousand dollars, they might be like, ah, sorry, <laughs> happen, yeah. And there are different ways, guys, to get into it. Like you don't have to start as a muralist. Like you're still an artist. You can either teach workshops. So, um, I back in the days had a eco-friendly type of workshop that I came up with, which was painting with coffee. And cool. um, I was part of the crew at Elements, which was a great 24-7 oh, for three days festival. Um, yeah. And that was definitely an experience. Uh, the thing I regretted the most is the fact that by painting with coffee, they put me on, they put my workshop on as a first thing in the morning. At the point oh, for seven festival, <laughs> so um, oh, everyone was my, a bit. <laughs> my students were um were, were there, but they weren't really there, um, which made it both very cool and and it made me it gave me so much more responsibility though because like you got very hot in there, they were dehydrated, so you become like this facilitator a carer. in a carer, other than just teaching a workshop, um. Yeah. Yeah, so that was interesting. I decided I don't really want to do it again. Uh, I was feeling too mm. responsible. Um, and then yeah. you can also do oh, what I always wanted to do, and I hope this is still going to happen, is um, paint on stage like when someone like bloody closey plays. Like that's like so yeah. high up in my dreams, you know. But obviously you need a cool, good, cool style that people would love you watch painting while you do that but that happens a lot at these festivals where you can paint on stage while music is getting painted um, music is getting mm -hmm. played and you absorb the energy of this massive crowd of people um, singing mm -hmm. and dancing mm -hmm. along and I think that's pretty that should be pretty cool oh I did I've done that once I think it was at elements oh. as well and uh, I was so nervous I was like wow <laughs> I don't know. It just it freaked me out a little bit, but uh, I painted quite big because I'm used to painting big. So I had like a really big board, and I was just using tube paint because obviously spray it's not really oh, like yeah. a vibe for everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just painted like real expressive kind of like um, yeah, like abstract kind of thing, and yeah, people loved watching it come together because it was really bright, colorful. It was big. And it was just different, like so. I got really good feedback from it, and yeah, we would definitely do it again. It's That's just so a good cool. time. Who was, who was playing? Um, I can't remember. Did, it was really did you get hectic. To that or that they kind of just threw you on stage. Um, so I was in the gallery, and then they were like, "Oh, do you want do you want to like paint on stage?" And I was like, "Yeah, sweet." Usually they will ask all the gallery artists, like. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Do a um yeah do it do some painting on stage, but it's hectic. Uh, like the 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 subs are just like vibrating through you. And through like, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is the can does the canvas shake? Because canvases are quite thin. I would expect them to shake as well. True, probably. Yeah. 
I, I've so, found what I found what a lot of artists do is like they'll have their painting like eighty percent done. Yeah. And then it's and then, they're mainly just just tinkering on it. Yeah, that, that yeah. sounds smart. It definitely yeah. takes. I started from scratch so. though. I started from a blank canvas, oh, which is why I think everyone liked it because they saw it from a blank, blank canvas to a, like a piece at the end. Yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah, like that's... most of the time, look. Artists are just doing tiny little details and stuff, and like you yeah, can't different. really see it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, there you go. That's a very good tip. Mm. Um, hey, I think I covered most questions, uh, except for um, any advice you will give to someone who hasn't painted at any festival but would love to do so. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well, I've got a question for you, but I'll answer that first um yeah i would just say like just like put yeah write, put together like a nice email you know spend some time on it get some images of like your best work that you want to and also too because like festivals are open they don't really tell you what to paint so it's a it's a chance for you to really experiment with what style you want to develop yeah, so sure. yeah put some images together of like your best work and something that you think will fit the vibe you know um and just say like look i'm a mural artist i'd really love to come and paint at your festival just seeing if there's any uh, opportunities or walls or like anything that i can help out with i'd love to be a part of it and um and then just say like yeah i'm happy to negotiate um a price whether it's just covering your materials um and a ticket um mm -hmm. And then once you do that and, like, do a good job too. Don't get super wasted and, you know, <laughs> not finish your piece because I've seen people do it. Like, they, they get the opportunity and then they don't finish it or they just go and party and, like, you know, you got to remember that you're there basically yeah. as a performer as well. Um, so, but yeah, do your best work. Make sure you're friendly and... and and then they'll be stoked and then they'll for sure like next year um you know as soon as you send them a message they're going to be like yep most of the time um yeah but yeah super, it's super cool i love i love seeing like all the artists um you know at, at festivals and especially now there's more like muralists involved in festivals too so it's like yeah get amongst it yeah, <laughs> oh and my I've I was going to say, my question for you is, do you have any um, festivals that you're going to apply for anytime soon, like street art or music? Well, I did um, I did apply for Brisbane Street Art Festival, which was happening while I was traveling back to Brisbane for that two weeks that I barely stayed there. Okay. And I didn't get selected again, which was really sad. <laughs> um, mm. But, you know, one day, and then I also applied for Darwin's Freedom Festival, and I didn't get selected for that one either, which in my opinion, the Darwin's Freedom Festival so far, out of every city that I saw that has a street art festival, is the, is the one. Like, I've they're doing that. something good. so good out there. They're just so good. Um, Nice. And I don't really know where my plans are enough in advance, I suppose, with the 100 mural project. Like now I just came all the way to Western Australia. And surprisingly enough, Perth doesn't really have one, which is a bit oh. of a bummer. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. They have a lot of good street art and a very yeah. good um, demand for murals, that's oh. for sure. All the artists here like really thrive. Like the prices are ridiculous. I think nobody charges as much as a muralist in Perth either, for what I've heard so far. Um, awesome. But no, I I need to start exploring the the do scene here. To be fair, so um, we are hoping nice. to go to the juggling festival that's happening here in uh, um, October. I think so. Cool. Just reconnect a little bit with the fire tribe and fire spinning, which usually, you know, ends, ends up being interconnected with artists as well. So I hope to meet some as well. But That's no, so nothing cool. official on the horizon. And I do miss um, Queensland for that. I think because we have good weather, we have more festivals. That's the only thing I can really mm. think of. Yeah, nice. Mm. 
How, how long are you staying over in Western Australia for? So I'm about to go um, leave Monday to head inland to paint two large water tanks. This is going to be my largest project to date. And it's actually going to happen exactly on the two year anniversary since I painted my first paid mural ever. Um, so mm, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a big, it's been a very steep um, acceleration of size of walls, <laughs> I would yeah. say. Um, I just bought a Graco, like the, the big sprayer. And oh, awesome. um, I also got sponsored by Dulux, which is huge. So yeah, okay. all of this is gonna get announced very soon. Lucky for yeah. you guys. So yeah, this has been, it's been great, but I'm still like processing it. Ben has been a little bit sick, so this past couple of days have been like so hectic and I can't believe like it's about to happen. I'm about to go and paint so big. Um, mm. So that's going to take a month. And then after that, I have some other projects lined up in the area. So I think we're going to stay in Western Australia for a little while, at least until end of October. And then mm. I hope to do uh, South Australia because I haven't really painted there yet. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So where are you traveling to next? Um, I've got projects pretty much in the area booked until like September. Wow. Um, oh. Yeah, which is kind of cool because like I'm really enjoying just being back home like with my friends and stuff. Um, but after that, yeah, I don't know. I'm really keen. I've never been over to Western Australia, so I'd love to head over at some point. Yay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We are moving here, so I'll be here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Is that good? Yeah, cool. <laughs> oh, they keep it know. a bit of a secret, but yeah. yeah. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Schmidt travels. He has a van as well. So uh, I'm sitting inside my van right now, and he's sitting inside his van right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. I feel like. I often think about this, like how how good of a tool it is as a mural artist. Like you get to stay on site, like where you're at, um, and have all your gear with you. I mean, it can get a bit hectic living and working in the same space, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, it's it's a great tool to be able to do what we do. I'm heading up to the Sunshine Coast tomorrow to look at a job. And I lined up like a uh, little kind of music one night festival thing up there as well. So it's just cool to be able to like, okay, I need to go look at this job. Is there anything else up there I could do? Maybe I could go around and look at some walls. You know, is there anything else going on? Yeah. And just net network and stuff. Yeah. I like the fact that I have a kitchen with me at all times. I get so hungry when I paint <laughs> that it's not even funny. Um, mm. So it's very good to have my own fridge and be able to, like, you know, make myself a coffee anytime I need one instead of, like, relying on going and finding somewhere or leaving site. I also yeah. like the fact that I can have a nap if I want to. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes painting a wall. Yeah, like you start early and then, you know, you hit that spot in the middle of the day where you're like, I can either paint for two more hours and that's it, or I can climb in, have a nap and then paint for four more. So it's pretty handy that you can do that. And it saves you a lot of money on accommodation. So now I'm not telling everyone go buy a van and convert it, but being a muralist, like realistically speaking, you're going to have to travel a little bit the more walls you paint because... There are only that many walls around you that you can find and it's part of the fun the fact that you can work in different places um mm. but if you start like paying for accommodation and all the meal out of that mural budget is gonna eat into it very quickly and then you're doing it only to cover the costs i suppose whereas i feel like by not having to ever pay for accommodation like you really build wealth like it's a very well paying job when you don't paint a festival <laughs> so i guess what i'm trying to say to conclude yes. this live about um painting at so mural festivals yeah. is that people don't paint at festivals to make money but it is great fun you connect with artists in a way that um we don't usually do because our job is quite solitary in other ways 
For and sure. unless you have good friends, like I'm lucky to have contacts like you in the industry that we can, you know, chat and vent about things, then these events are great for that too. And um, they let you paint almost anything you want as long as you present it well. And yeah, and that's probably the, um, the top. For sure, thing. yeah, definitely the, definitely the community aspect of it is really nice because like so much of what we do is kind of salt like you're doing it mostly by yourself um so yeah going to like painting a festival is a great way to just like meet artists in the area um and yeah pretty much that community aspect of it's super nice hey yeah mm. drew just said surface festival is awesome i saw some great footage actually of it recently so surface fest is near the gold coast right like miami Miami, totally. you should Australia, guys in case someone in america is watching this um yeah. and th there are quite a few in australia i am trying to put a comprehensive list that's going to be available on my website because i find that people struggle so finding good. all of that information and it took me a while to put it together so i'm just going to double check that they all still exist and roughly the months and what i do i put it in my calendar um like two months before to check if the applications are open. I know it's very mm. manual and very time consuming, but I found that it works if I do that. <laughs> that is so, so good. Like, I'm sure that'd be a very valu valuable resource to a lot of people. Yeah. That's cool. Good on you. Anyone have any questions? Anyone online? I know we lost a few people, but um, this will be the time. If not, I will try to wrap this into a reel and publish it on our accounts, right? So if you guys have any questions when you listen to this, just drop them in the comments and we'll make sure we reply to them. Awesome. 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 So this good to well. chat to you Thank again. Thank you, Michael. You're the best. Yeah, and talk soon. Awesome, PJ. Thanks for having me on. Talk soon. Peace. <laughs>